Welcome Sawyer Knights to another top five video. This one is gonna be for my top my emphasis on my top five picks for best female superheroes. Uh, this will this not will not include villains, it'll just be mate people that primarily play the role of of hero. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, jump into it. At number five, I've chosen Zeppern. I believe that's how you say the name. She also her real name is Faith. But Traditionally called Zeppelin as a code name from the Valiant Comics, uh, originated in the Valiant Comics title Harbingers, which is basically Valiant's version of X Men, and she has the ability to fly. Uh, but that's not really what makes her different or make her makes her special on, and puts her on this list. What puts her on, on this list is uh, a couple things. One thing being that she is one of the pretty much one of the few superheroes, especially female superheroes, that's represented in a less than um, standard body type, I guess you could say. Like she's 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 usually an overweight character, which is something that we just don't see that often, especially in female characters. And it just it's a nice fresh it's a nice fresh air of realism that you know not all superheroes are going to be like super toned and in shape and curvy and whatnot. They're going sometimes they're going to be a little overweight, and it's really interesting to see that in comic book form. Next up, we have DC's own fishnet sporting superheroes. No, not Zatanna. I mean, Black Canary. Uh, yes, Black Canary is a really aw awesome character to me. She's very mm -hmm. much, you know, the quintessential female ass kicker, street fighter, you know, uh, street level hero of the that represents the female demographic for DC. I mean, there's other characters you could say do that too, but she's one of the ones I feel like is just most iconic. Uh, you know, and it's just really cool. She's a very old character, you know. Originally from the 40s, and then like they changed it so that it was her mom, and so she's also a legacy hero, which is kind of cool, uh, you know, which is always a cool thing to have legacy characters. But I think the thing that really makes Black Canary stand out the most to me is just the little small details of like surrounding her whole her character traits and her powers. I think, sorry, about that. Uh, sorry about that alarm, but yeah, Black Canary. The thing I think that stands out the most about her is the fact that her she her power is her scream, which Traditionally, screaming is something that's shown as a sign of weakness, a sign of of help. You know, you're, you're screaming because you're scared or you need help. But it's really interesting that Black Canary uses it as a power, as like a, as, a, as a strength. For her, when she screams, it's her exerting her power over other people and defeating people or fighting people. It's not a sign of call for help, which is really cool. But the thing that makes her stand out more than that is the fact that she her personality traits. She is a very nerdy geeky gamer kind of chick you know she's always dropping these references to, to different tv shows and comic books and just n geeky franchises and she's always she just ha and she always has this this kind of positivity about her like she's always she basically thinks everything's a game for the most part and it's really interesting especially because those are character traits you normally don't see on female characters uh, you know, especially when she was first made in the 90s, we, we hadn't quite got to this renaissance of geeky gamer chicks yet. So that was kind of something that was different and it really made her stand out. And it was really fun to, to read her dialogue, to see her like reference everything as a comic book or as a movie. It's It was just very fun. We see it a lot nowadays with different characters, but at the time I think it was something very fresh. And it's something that I think has always really made her interesting from a character design standpoint. Uh, and you had the storyline in the 80s, I think the long, long bow hunters is what it's called, where she was on pretty much raped and hurt really bad, abused, and she, she got her, I think her throat slit or something, and she lost her voice, she lost her scream for a while, and it was really just crazy that a character that relies on this scream couldn't use the scream anymore, and that was when she was at her most vulnerable, and, and feeling weakest was when she couldn't scream anymore, which is just a kind of interesting dynamic, I really think, for this character. Next up at number three, we have Storm, the goddess of the elements, which, you know, from the X-Men. She is such a great character. I mean, really is. Just, wh wh one of the things I love about Storm the most is just her elegant elegance, her, 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 just her attitude, her personality. It's larger than life. Like, she's almost like, a, she's pretty much royalty. I mean, she is royalty, I guess, in some storylines when she marries Black Panther. But, I mean, like, just in general, she she truly does embody the, the kind of classical, classic goddess you know, like power over everything. That kind of, she just has such a, a strength to her and such a like noble, noble kind of 
hierarchy to her. It's just really cool. It's something I enjoy. Her power set's awesome too. She's very powerful. She can literally call down storms and hurricanes and all this stuff. And it's just a really interesting power set that she takes something that is normally uncontrollable, such as the weather, and totally dominates it, controls it. And I think that's really a strong testament to how powerful she is as a person and as a you know mutant. So yeah, definitely a really interesting character. And throw in the fact that she has this kind of this street rat kind of a background, you know, in her nationality and all that from being from Africa, being from a place of hardships, it really makes her interesting. Next up at number two, we have Batgirl, the Barbara Gordon edition. Uh, the original, you know, the uh, the greatest in my opinion. Uh, I mean, I really like the Cassandra one too, I think is her name is, the badass fighter one. But this one is really cool too, and this is a great one. This is classic. I mean, I've always loved the idea that Batgirl is essentially, you know, the daughter of one of Batman's most trusted allies, but he never, the ally, you know, Gordon never knows that. She goes out and fights crime and. She just wants, you know, to prove to her dad that she's this great hero. And, I don't know, it's just, there's something about the character. She's very relatable, I think, more so than most of the female superheroes out there. You know, Wonder Woman is not very relatable for the, for the average person. Uh, especially, and I, I, would, I would imagine she's not very relatable to the average girl either, but that girl seems like she's more relatable. Like, I think most people, even guys and girls, can imagine putting on that cop. Okay, not putting on the exact costume, but you know what I mean. I think most people can imagine just wanting to suit up and, and be the sidekick of this you know badass shadowy character and try to prove that to yourself that you are as tough I don't know it's just something about her I think she's one of the more like I said more relatable more inspirational uh, of the female heroes and uh, yeah she's just cool like I mean uh, the costume is a great design even the traditional costume all the way up to this the more modern look which has actually gone back to being more traditional it's a great costume design uh, and even when she became Oracle, she was still a great character. Like, I love the transition of her being this, you know, frontline fighter. And even when she's got this morally wounded uh, injury that really breaks her as a character, she still comes back and finds a way to be useful and finds a way to fight crime as the Oracle. It's just a, a testament to this. That about sums it up for my top five female heroes. Uh, definitely uh, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what your top five list would be. Uh, let me know just uh, you know and you guys have a good good day I appreciate all the stuff you guys do follow like and all that next up at number one we have the Black Widow Natasha Romanoff herself I really love this character and she is one of the first characters you think of when you think of a badass female superhero combo character you think of Black Widow I mean you may also think of Supergirl and Wonder Woman and maybe Batgirl but you're definitely gonna think of Black Widow too. Like she's just so awesome. Um, you know, she's and she's very desirable. Like that's one of the things. She very much embodies all the things of like all the lust aspects. You know, that red hair, the long red hair. You know, the skin tight bodysuit. Just that that really uh, seduct seductive Russian personality. You know, the the accent. You know, the, just the danger of her character. She really does embody like everything that's desirable and everything that I can imagine you know girls wanting to be I guess you could say I'm not saying that girls should strive to, strive to be like that but it's kinda like you know young boys wanna be like a you wanna be a badass they wanna be like you know this bad soldier or whatever I could see young girls wanting to be the badass female character like Black Widow here so it just makes sense um, and you add in all the hardships of like of being raised in like an assassin camp in the Southern Union, uh, you know, you you add in like the transition from becoming a villain to becoming a hero, being a, being an assassin to being a soldier of the state, or you know, it's just really interesting. Her whole spy, the whole spy gimmick of her character is really intriguing to me, and just her dynamic with different characters, Hawkeye, Punisher, Hawk Hawk in the movies. Even though some people didn't like that relationship, I thought it was kind of interesting that you know the badass female would, would, would fall for the guy who is the toughest guy in the room but he, he never actually needs to fight which is a line straight from the movie 